lesson time. Let's do it. Module 7, the final module. Here we are at last. Okay, let's dive right in. We are going to create conversion tables, okay, for length and weight. And it says capacity there, but it, we actually don't do that in this lesson. Um, and use the tables to solve problems. The, <clears throat> the big thing here is we're doing like inches to feet, feet to yards, ounces to pounds, okay? That's, that's what conversion tables mean. It's like how many ounces in a pound, how many inches in a foot, that sort of mess we're getting into today. So let's do that. There is, as you see, a sprint for this lesson. If you're gonna do that, go ahead and do it. You're gonna have to. Um, working with money again, which is always lots of fun. Um, with the addition and subtraction here, if you're watching this video, you can pause. If you're watching this in some other format or you want to pause, you can just write them down, including the answers, and then go back and actually do the math yourself at your convenience. So we have 699,999 ones written in standard form. Looks like a that. Yeah. Okay. And then 155,755 ones. And this is unit form. This is called because it's saying what units in the place value chart. Um, standard form. Yep. Very similar, right? Because they're making it easy for us. Now to add those together, go ahead. You should get 855,754. If you don't, one of us is wrong. Here's another one. Adding 456,789 plus 498,765. Just saying these numbers is good practice and the addition as well. You should get, say with me, 955,554. And so if, if, if you ever do have any trouble saying these numbers, you can look at it every time you see the comma, right? You just read this as if it were a standalone number. 955, we come to the comma, we say 1,554. Read them as standalone numbers, okay? So for example, here we have 400 thousands and one one. 400,000, see 400, I just read it like a regular number. Say 1,000 for the comma, one. Got it. <clears throat> 235,000, 165 ones. Looks like that in standard form. I know we're kind of cruising through here, so I said either pause or do the actual calculations later, a little addition subtraction practice. And of course, you know we're going to subtract because we have all those zeros, those lovely, lovely zeros to regroup across there. Um, and you should get 164,836 as your difference. What's the difference? That's the difference. Here's another one to subtract. And see, again, just read this as a standalone number. 708,050. Yeah, notice there's no and in here. Sometimes you, you hear people insert two ands here, like 700 and 8,000 and 50. There's no ands here to read it properly. 708,050 minus 256,089. Excellent. You should get 451,961. Lovely. Now let's get into the juice. Here we go. Pounds and ounces. Pounds and ounces. Yes. All right. You have a table like this in, in your, I think it's called a practice sheet uh, for lesson one. It says practice sheet or something. Uh, so one pound, I'm just going to tell you, is 16 ounces. Okay. That's the way it is. And th now this system is now called the customary system. Um, when, when I was young, they called it the English system, even though at that point uh, Great Britain was already off this and using metric. Um, then it was called the American system, but that's kind of misleading because it's not like we invented it here. We're just the only ones still using it. Um, and so now it's just called the customary system because it's come down through us as a custom. So uh, 16 ounces make up one pound, okay? And so now, as we go through this chart, we'll just be adding 16 each time. To say two pounds then is 32 ounces. Okay, that adding 16, there's no regrouping. To get to three pounds is 48 ounces. Now here you do have a little regrouping. Four pounds would be 
64 ounces, although another way you could do that is to take, and I want you to see these connections, take 32 and double it to get 64, right? All right, so now five would be another 16 ounces. Five pounds would be 80 ounces. Uh, adding that 16, no regrouping, so 96. Now this one does have regrouping, right? Okay, so add 16 to 96. You should get 112. To get eight pounds, how many ounces? Add another 16 ounces, no regrouping there. 128. Nine pounds would be, got it, at 16, okay, 144, and that should be a familiar looking number. You should say, oh, that's, that's a familiar looking number, isn't it? Yeah, because it's all right, 12 times 12, a dozen dozens, also known as a gross. I'm not making it up, it's called a gross. Um, and then 10 is easy, we just write the times 10 slide, right, 16, 160, 160, okay. So this is just the starting point. And now we can use this table to answer some questions. For example, if I said, well, how many ounces then are in 15 pounds? A couple ways you can go about this. One is yes, you can multiply 15 pounds times 16 ounces per pound. And that would tell you how many ounces are in 15 pounds. However, I think I see an easier way given that we have this table in front of us. Do you see it? Yeah, we know that 10 and 5 are 15, right? The 15 pounds, we can decompose it as 10 pounds and 5 pounds. And then, ah, we already have out here 10 times 16 and 5 times 16. So we can just pop together, yeah, 80 plus 160. And if you know, skip counting by 8, right? 8, 16, 24, but it's times 10, so 240. So that would mean that 15 pounds contains uh, 240 ounces. You could do 15 times 16 and you should get 240. That works as well. I'll give you some other ways of thinking about it though. All right, so now let's say you get something with pounds and ounces and give it to me all in ounces. 12 pounds, 10 ounces. Let's put that in all into ounces. We can do that same decomposition here. Let's say, let's call the 12 pounds 10 and two pounds. You can actually get to where you can do this stuff in your head then. Because the 10 pounds is, is the easy one, right? Because it's just the times 10 slide there. So 160 ounces. The other two is just 16 double, 32. Can I add 160 and 32, either on paper or in my head? 192, okay. And then I have those other 10 ounces. 202, right? Add those up, 202 ounces. So 12 pounds, 10 ounces is 202 ounces. Great. All right. Now we're going to hop over. We're leaving pounds and ounces, which of course is a weight measurement. I should have mentioned that, also known as mass. And I've said this before, but I'll say it again. There is a scientific difference between weight and mass, but for our purposes here in just learning these calculations, we're using those words as synonyms interchangeably. Now let's go on to yards to feet. Um, and you, you probably have a sense, by the way, why people invented the metric system, don't you? Because that's totally why I can do it, ain't it? And this is too, like this stuff is, uh, when you get into how many feet in, the, feet in the miles, it's craziness, right? So thank God for the metric system. Here we go, yards to feet. One yard is three feet. So you picture that yard stick, right? About yay. Similar to a meter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. In fact, a meter's closer to like 39 inches, um, just a little bit more than a yard. So you picture that yard stick. There's one, two, three feet inside there. So if you have two of those yardsticks, you'd have six feet. Ah, and you see already the pattern. We are, right, skip counting by threes. Three, six, nine. Four yards would be 12 feet. Five yards would be 15 feet. Six yards would be 18 feet. Seven yards would be 21 feet. Eight yards would be 24 feet. 9 yards would be 27 feet, and 10 yards would be, indeed, 30 feet. Great. Remember, again, that's the easy part. Now we want to do some number crunching with that. So if I said, hey, this is 37 yards, 2 feet, you'd say, hey, I need that just in feet. Okay, well, let's take the 37 and decompose it. Now, I could do 37 times 3, right, and then add the other 2 feet, and that would give me... 
right? That amount in just feet. Um, but we could also decompose it. We could say, oh, well, 30 times 3, probably do that in my head, right? Mm, yeah. And then 7 times 3, so the 37, decomposing it as 30 and 7, and then add in the two feet. So 30 times 3, uh, and, and I do want to, I kind of skimmed over that, but perhaps there's even another way you could do it. I mean, you could do 10, 10, 10, and 7. So add 30 and 30, another 30, the 7 uh, times 3, and then the 2. Okay, so there are other ways you could go about this. So um, always be looking for that fourth grade math. I tell my students all the time, they're probably rolling their eyes right now, is less about the number crunching and more about the logic of mathematics. Like, what are we doing and why? What's another way to go about this? How can I think about this differently? I love it. Okay, so here we go. So 30 times 3 plus 7 times 3 and then add in the 2 feet. So 30 times 3 is 90. 7 times 3, you know, is 21. And then the 2 feet. So 90 and 21. Okay, 111 plus 2 more. 113. So there are 113 feet in 37 yards, 2 feet. Yeah, okay, last one, feet to inches. How many inches in one foot? 12, okay, so when you look at a ruler now, now we're talking about instead of the, the yardstick, we're talking about a ruler, regular, what we call a ruler, it's 12 inches long, it's one foot, all right? So that's 12 inches, double that, 24, triple it, 36, Four feet would then contain 48 inches, and we haven't had any regrouping yet, but now we do. Five feet is 60 inches. Okay, no regrouping to add 12 to that. Six feet is 72 inches. Again, no regrouping. Seven feet is 84 inches. Eight feet is 96 inches. Nine feet yeah, okay, 108, <laughs> and lastly, 10 feet, just right in the time set slide, you can think of it as, okay, it would be 120. Uh, by the way, just note the patterns here. It's kind of interesting. Look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, interesting, 2, 4, 6, 8, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 0, interesting. So uh, just a little math fun there. All right, so let's say I said that. Eh, this thing's 20 feet, and you say, well, they sell the blah, blah, blah in inches, so how many inches is 20 feet? Well, you can do 20 times 12. You could also say, oh, I know 10 feet is 120 inches, just ran that time sense line, double the 120, you get 240, 240 inches in 20 feet. Okay, so you can multiply 20 times 12, and I show you different ways, not just to tax your brain, but also so when your teacher says, go back and check your work, the way you check it, perhaps, is to do it a different way. Use a different strategy and see if you come up with the same answer. So now let's say we mix it up a bit and say 6 feet 8 inches. How many inches is that? Well, look, I'm not going to pretend it's not here. Look, 6 feet is 72 inches plus 8 more is 80 inches. Okay, and if you didn't have this handy-dandy chart handy, you would just say do actually do the 6 times 12 is 72. Um, and there are other ways you could go about that as well. 25 feet, 5 inches. How many inches is that all together? All right, well, we can break it down. We can decompose the 25 as 10, 10, and 5. So 120, 120, 60, plus 5. You see that? Yes, you can also do 25 times 12. You could even, and this is, might be a, another way of doing it, is you know that 425s make 100 and there's three fours and 12, so that's 300. 25 times 12 is 300. See, without doing the multiplication, I can just rationalize it there and then add the five. So let's go back to that first method here. 120 plus 120 plus 60 is, well, we know already this is 240 plus 60 takes us to, I just said it, 300 plus the five, 305. So there are 305 inches in 25 feet five inches. Woo! All right, so here's, a, here's another one mixing it up. 32 feet, seven inches. All right, again, I think decomposing this is good. 30 times 12 might be something we can do, two times 12, and then add in those other seven inches. 
So the 30 times 12, you can do 3 times 12 is 36, times 10 is 360, 2 times 12, you know, is 24, and then the 7 inches, 360 plus 24, 384, plus 7 more, got it? 391. So there are 391 inches and 32 feet, 7 inches. Oh. Wow, and look at that. This was a pretty straightforward lesson, huh? And, and there are several, the first few lessons here are just like this. You're already on the problem set here and is using redraw right to solve these first three problems, uh, which means make a little tape diagram, right? Okay, and then this is a, uh, an abbreviated version of that table we just did and I'm fine with you going back and using that table. And notice though, it does skip around. It doesn't go one, two, three, four, five. It's one, three, seven, 10, 17. The rule for converting pounds to ounces, there are different ways you can, you can do this. Uh, one way I would phrase these is pounds times 16 ounces per pound. Okay, so that's what you're doing. You take pounds multiplied by 16 ounces per pound which you can call your conversion factor. You're converting from one unit of measurement to another. Same thing here. The rule for converting feet to inches, you would say feet times 12 inches per foot. Yards to feet, three, well, yards times three feet per yard. Yes, okay. And then you have a whole bunch of conversions to do here. All right, eight of them there. And, you know, the numbers get bigger, like here with 27 pounds. You're probably not going to want to do 27 times 16, right? So maybe break that down into 10, 10, and 7. See how that works. And go back and use that table we made. Um, true, false. If it's false, it says specifically to change the right side of the comparison to make it true. So if you were saying that this is false, you'd have to change this side to make it true. Okay? Exit ticket, more of the same but simpler. Not too much to do there. And then when you get to the homework, yes, Hop on over to my homework time videos and I'll walk you through every single one of these one by one in excruciating detail. Well, look what you have done. You've gone and done it again. You finished another lesson. Kudos to you. Get on some practice now. Do that problem set, the exit ticket and all that. And I will see you again next time. It is once again, lesson time.